today we're going to be going through common table expressions in T-SQL, also known as CTEs, and how leveraging these can really take your analysis to the next level uh, with your results from your lake house data. So before we go over to your desktop, what the heck is a CTE? Can you just explain why would I care? Why would I use a CTE? What's what what's what would motivate me to do that? Yeah, with the CTE, it's going to be a virtualized table that you can create in your queries that you can then reuse later on in your query syntax. So let's say I want to summarize results of my products table and I want to pull down uh, revenue by products for a certain year, but I want to do that before. I join it to another table or set of tables later on in my query. I can leverage a CTE to generate those results, save them uh, in the query, and then reuse those like I would be pulling in a table from my lake house or data warehouse. Oh, that makes a ton of sense. So you're basically creating a virtual table of data on the fly and then you're using that inside of a query to get other information, right? Exactly right. So instead of needing to go through the process of creating a whole new table or a whole new view in your lake house or warehouse, I can leverage a CTE to do it on the fly and recall it later on in my query. I got you. All right, let's over your desktop and check this out. Let's do it. So you can see here my SQL query editing window over the top of my lake house data. You can see my table list and I'm going to minimize that for now. And go down to my queries menu. Again, you can see previous examples where we showed dense rank pivot in our original 2022 sales rep revenue query. I'm going to go ahead and generate a new SQL query and I'm going to bring over my common table expression example, and we're gonna walk through this query here. So you can see here some basic syntax to be familiar with, uh, with a common table expression or CTE. The first one, or, or potentially the only one you'd have in your query, needs to start with a with clause. So you're gonna start with a with statement, and then name your CTE. It's important that you give it a name. So in this case, I'm going to pull product type sales for 2022. So uh, gave it that exact name. And then after, you're going to add an as, uh, an as statement there. Okay. I'm then going to go into open parentheses. And then underneath that, I'm going to add my select statement just like I would writing a select statement, for example, with my 2022 sales rep revenue. So I'm gonna have my select attribute aggregate, my from clause where I define the tables and the joins that I'm bringing in, my where clause where I'm defining the year 2022. And again, since we're using an aggregate, I have a group by for the attribute column product type that I'm not aggregating. Now here comes the pretty cool part as well. You can create multiple CTEs within a single SQL statement. And to do that, all I need to do is put a close parentheses after that select statement in my first CTE, add a comma, and then define my next CTE. Okay. Uh, an important point to notice here is with the first CTE, I had to add a with statement. If I define more than one CTE in the same SQL uh, query, I don't need to add that with the second time. I just simply need to define the name of that second or third or fourth, fourth CTE in my query. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to name it product type sales 2021. Because as we get to the bottom here, I'm going to compare 2021 versus 2022 uh, in my uh, results. Okay. That makes sense. 
So the query on my 2021 product type sales is going to look very similar to the 2022. The only difference being in my where clause, I'm going to change that year value from 2022 to 2021. And all the other components will remain the same in this example. Okay. Now, what we talked about kind of explaining common table expressions at the top of this video. I can then call those CTEs in another select statement and join them together on the common columns and relationships that exist. So in this example, my product type column is the common uh, attribute that exists between these two CTEs. So I'm going to join on that value here below. Okay. And bring back both the 2022 revenue and 2021 revenue from those CTEs. And then I just have an order by at the end for product type to sort by product type name here. And let's see what we get. So take, this is a little beefier of a query, so it takes a little longer to come back. Yeah, I mean, I think that's expected. Yep, we're about at six seconds here, so not too bad. Uh, very quick results still. Again, we're uh, we're nowhere near that hour time frame uh, that <laughs> uh, you you wouldn't want to see with that. So very good performance here. Uh, notice at the bottom, I did add some formatting because as we're returning, we're not using those aggregates any longer. So we can make them look nice uh, and readable there with our commas and no decimal points. And again, by product type, I can see that 2021 revenue versus 2022 and have that sorted nicely. Oh, and you could even do some you know, math against this. So if you had to like subtract one from the other, because it's in two separate tables, it makes it easy to reference uh, those individual items, right? Absolutely. I could go ahead and do uh, my 2022 revenue minus my 2021 revenue. Mm. And get your growth number. Exactly. So I could get my revenue variance as I'm going to give it a nice name here. This is the toughest part of all technology is naming. So uh, well done. <laughs> so now I have a variance column. I can see how my 2022 revenue performed against 2021 for each product type. Let's give it a run. Whoa. So the first one ran in like six seven seconds this one is sub a second well how, how does that happen glad you brought that up chris as you continue to run queries in the fabric interface uh there's caching that goes on with that query so essentially fabric gets smarter the more times you run the same query and saves that in memory and your performance is only going to continue to get better the more times you run that query. Wow, that this is amazing because now we have these different queries, right? We've got these, the, you know, the the sale product sales for 2021, 2022, and we've got the the variance in the revenue there. All in, you know, we could do reporting on this, and 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 we could share this all out. Wow, absolutely. So I could take this. Rename it, give it a nice name, product type, revenue, summary. And just like we showed before, I could take that query and put it in my shared query section so other people in my organization can access those results. This is this is fantastic. I, I, big fan. Well done. Awesome. Well, Marcus, thank you for running us through uh, this video uh, or showing us how we can use common table expressions. I can see why this is uh, something that pe people find or that you find to be the most powerful SQL statement out there. Um, what do you got lined up for us for the next video?
certainly come back for our next videos. We're going to talk about how you can create views within your SQL editor, how you can connect to Excel with those queries, and also visualize your results directly in a Power BI report. All right, you guys got to come back for that one. I, I can't wait to check that out. We'll see you guys later.